Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, welcome to another evening of the late one with myself, all the way from London, England, the UK, and the late one with yours truly, Silburn Sidio. Thank you. I want to take this opportunity to. Uh, encourage persons um, when you come on to please um, it would be great if you like and share this video be good and I'm gonna give some time for persons to uh, come on that's good today has been um, I would say for the UK today has been a uh, very hot and lovely day um, nice weather I mean you know nice nice weather I would say very lovely weather um, you know not that cold not too hot but the weather was really nice and I think when the weather is like that I believe it it is very fantastic and I think we might be having a very lovely um, summer Uh, but but at the same time you got to watch the weather because sometimes it looks hot but it's it's uh, the the sun is not that um, really <clears throat> great anyhow at the same time but you know what can I say there's been different things which has been in the news and before I go on to the main gist of today when you go into politics Boris Johnson has put himself forward yeah Boris Johnson has put himself forward to run as the next conservative leader because the Prime Minister Theresa May uh, as now has been put in somewhat of a corner where she will have to somehow um, give a date as to when she's going to resign or step down. Next week on the 23rd of May, we're going to be having the European elections and with the European elections for MEP that's going to be a model of elections well not a model of elections but uh, it is going to be actually sending a signal as to and could be sending a signal as to whether the country is like a, I would say it's like a mini a mini referendum to a certain way a mini referendum and that mini referendum is actually saying do people want Brexit or people don't want Brexit. I think in a way that it is very interesting that you've got parties which are coming out, like um, the Lib Dem, which said they're a Remain party. You've got parties like um, the Change UK, which is uh, not a Change UK, but a Remain party. And somehow the, the, the Green Party is saying that they are a Green party. But somehow what is... What seems to be missing is the fact that people actually voted to leave the European Union, but at the same time, you've got members of parliament actually are adamant that they do not want it. And somehow one would consider that such a, I would say maybe like a, a betrayal or something like that, could be deemed as a betrayal, um, you know. Another thing which I, I found very interesting as well is is the fact that uh, with with the you know uh, this is Jeremy Kyle the Jeremy Kyle whereby the Jeremy Kyle program which has been um, axed because of this incident with this former guest and that is very um, that is, so they are giving a sort of overview and sort of investigate these reality programs. Anyway, that's not my forte still. Another sad news as well is that we're still having um, young girls being killed, young girls being missing in Jamaica. Yes, Jamaica. 
Thursday night, as I said on the, on the late one, is Jamaica night or Caribbean night, Thursday night. That's what it is. Thursday night is Caribbean night, Jamaica night, if anything. So every Thursday, I'll be focusing on some issues regarding Jamaica, you know? But regarding the little girls which have been missing, somebody pointed out that a lot of them were, have been found, but somehow there's a sh shade of mystery as to what really took place. Why were they missing? Where were they? There's one particular case whereby two girls were missing and they were found. People were all saying, oh my days, another one going missing. One girl was found at her father and her friend was also there at her father. And any parents would say, hang on a second, if you bring home a friend, a girlfriend or a boyfriend and you're a teenager, the question will be asking, where is the parent? Now we don't know the background to it. But I think we still need to keep a focus, a complete focus, and don't let it slip in regards to what is happening in Jamaica in regards to young children being killed, young children being found, young children being uh, missing. And I tell you what, I saw a gruesome picture today of the little girl who died recently. Um, somebody sent it to me and there's a voicemail with it, very disgusting, very crude. Not the voicemail, I mean, but just what has happened to the girl, very disgusting and very crude, I must say. Uh, I think her mother is from the UK, she was born in England here, and uh, don't know exactly what happened, but it's a very sad state, and the the principal of the school, uh, Mr. Preddy, um, was really being concerned about the whole thing. And uh, it is sad, it is sad, it is very sad. One child dies is one too much. Now I must apologize at the same time that when I said this show is coming on tonight, it's going to be at, uh, I said 10 o'clock UK time, 5 o'clock Florida time, and I mentioned 6 o'clock Jamaica time. That was a big mistake. I was just pointed out it's actually, it's not 6 o'clock Jamaica time, it's 4 o'clock Jamaica time because of the time difference. Trying to get with the time difference. Jamaica time difference is 6 hours and Florida is 5 hours, um, you know. So yeah, so tonight, um, my guest tonight, and um, I'm going to have is Miss uh, Michelle Adamolikon. She's the founder and president, executive director of the um, Talented Human Capital Executive with 23 years of progressive human resource operations across financial, educational, high tech and healthcare industries. Um, she's actually the president and executive director um, of the Reggae Girls Foundation, right? And I'm going to have her on tonight to talk about the Reggae Girls as to what's the, what's the situation with the Reggae Girls and... We had the Reggae Boys before, but we got the Reggae Girls. And with the Reggae Girls, are they going to bring home the gold? And we would love them to bring home the gold if anything like that. And, um, you know, they say women always get the job done. Am I correct, Michelle? Women always get the job that, done? That, that, that is correct, Silborn. Good, good evening. Good evening. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thank you. Fantastic. And how is, how is the land of Trump? The land of Trump. Oh, we are <laughs> hanging in there. We are hanging in there, literally. <laughs> well, but we're not going to talk politics tonight. Well, well I'm, in, I'm in the land of Brexit. I'm in the land of Brexit, <laughs> where, where anything happens, anything goes, you know? And, uh, gotcha. and the regular girls will go into the land of Frexit. They call it Frexit. If, if, if the France go for Brexit, if anything, they call it Frexit with macaron, you know? <laughs> yeah, gotcha. Yeah. Well, listen, um, thank you so much for coming on, um, um, Michelle. And ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you so much for also coming on. Um, I wanted to put my contribution to the reggae girls. So who best to start off with is with the president and executive director, am I correct, of the Reggae Girls Foundation, is that correct? That is correct, sir. President, co-founder, and executive director. Big title, Fantastic. but not too much. <laughs> yes, yes. And you're also a footballer, yeah? No, no, no. I'm actually not a footballer. I actually ran track. 
um, and um, went to the University of Texas at, at Austin and ran track for, for that university, two times national championships. Um, but my kids actually play football. Okay, fantastic. Um, so listen, uh, the reason why I wanted to, uh, I was wanted to come on is because a couple of friends actually sent me some messages to say that uh, uh, we need to support the regular girls um, because it seems like they're not getting that level of traction as all the regular boys got that level of traction. And I said, well, of course, I lend my platform as much as possible to support the cause for the regular girls because without ladies, men wouldn't be anywhere, isn't it? So we've got to support the women, isn't it? You said it, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> so without further ado, yeah, if, if the stage is yours now. Tell us about the Reggae Girls Foundation and um, the vision behind it and what's the, the goal, if anything. All right, well, Silborn, first and foremost, thank you so much for having us on your show. We thank are you. always excited, we're always excited to kind of share the word and um, kind of keep the movement going. Uh, the Reggae Girls Foundation was formed in January of 2018. Um, the vision for myself and the co-founders was we really wanted to create an organization that could support um, and create a sustainable um, you know, foundation for all of women's football in Jamaica. And yes. so similar to other, there's 24 countries in the World Cup, I can speak eloquently to the U.S., um, market and I can tell you that the financial backing and support that I see in the U.S. is above none. Mm -hmm. um, they truly have the support, the sponsorship, um, more than they they can even you know utilize in a given year. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I definitely um, felt that you know as it relates to Jamaica, we definitely have the capability. We have young girls with similar potential. Um, and all we needed to do was to basically create a movement to be able to get members of the diaspora. Well, we have 3 million um, Jamaicans outside of Jamaica and close to 3 million in Jamaica. If you think about that critical mass, if we had every Jamaican giving, you know, one dollar, we would be able to cr create a sustainable um, women's program um, and, a, and, a, and, a, and a, a, a bridge from the high school to the middle school, from the middle school to the high school, to the pro leagues, into the national leagues. Yes. So we really want to be able to create a feeder pool that will enable us to be, you know, in, in essence, be, you know, competitive at all of the national and international levels in competition for women's football. Right. Wow. So a little bit more about the, the, the foundation as we um, embarked on, you know, our journey, we were pleasantly pleased and surprised um, that the Reggae Girls qualified for the World Cup 10 months later. That was exciting, but it really forced us to propel our strategy a little bit faster than needed. And we really wanted to ensure that we um, started working towards creating a fundraising platform that would be able to help help the reggae girls prepare adequately for the, the reggae for the reggae girls world cup preparation tour so today can, i can can i can i just stop you right there um uh, was the foundation created before they 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 um, qualified yes so we started the foundation in january of 2018 they qualified in october november of 2018 so 10 months before we created the foundation yeah, so, you know, yeah, so we had a four pronged strategy. Um, the first one was to really start creating awareness across the diaspora, around the foundation, around the reggae girls, who they are. Um, and that's really what we started working on the first eight months. We, we worked on getting ourselves established as a 501c3 nonprofit organization and really started to try to grow our social media presence so that members of the diaspora basically would know a little bit about us, about the movement and what we were trying to do. 10 months later, the Reggae Girls qualified. So we quickly had to move to the fourth um, strategy that we had in place, which is the fourth strategy is to basically support the national teams to ensure that they are adequ adequately, um, you know, financially supported for preparations for major tournaments like the World Cup 
like the Pan American Games that will happen after the World Cup, wow. like some of the U-17 World Cups, the U-20 World Cups, right? There's a lot of work that has to go into preparing a team. Football is a team sport. And so while young players can basically work on developing themselves as an individual, we have to bring them together so that they can create that cohesive unit so that they can play effectively on the field. So the preparation camps are very critical and very important. Um, I recognize my daughter got invited um, by the assistant coach, Lauren Donaldson, to the U-17 um, CONCACAF qualifiers in Haiti. And I'll, I'll tell you, I'll share, um, you know, there was no camp. She showed up in Haiti two days before the, the tournament, had never met her teammates before, and showed up. They did the best that they could do. But I recognized in that tournament as I attended that these girls could have done so much better had they had gotten the support and preparation that they needed to be successful at that tournament. So right now, we are focused on two of our four strategies. The first one being creating awareness, and your program definitely allows us to do that. So thank you. And the fourth is working on creating financial support for the national teams and their preparation. And we have committed 100% of the funds that we raised between the Reggae Girls qualifying in October of 2018 until they get to the World Cup. Any funds that we raise will go and funnel into their preparation. Okay, fantastic. Um, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the show. And of course, I'm um, having um, Michelle adam who is the founder and president, uh, executive director of the Reddit Girls Foundation. And I must apologize to those who I put six, I put by mistake, uh, Michelle, that it was six o'clock Jamaica time, getting confused with the whole time difference mm -hmm. as much as possible. No. But when they come on anyhow still, they see the replay. And ladies and gentlemen, I would appreciate that anyone has come on now, if you just press share, press share this video with some friends uh, as well. Now, Michelle, the mission of the Reggae Girls Foundation, RGF, is to inspire, educate, mobilize, and support the next generation of young female soccer players in Jamaica through initiatives. We strive to improve the growth, development, access to quality soccer programs that enhance the physical, mental, personal development of girls in undeserved communities across Jamaica. It's interesting listening to that and what I started with the other day when we briefly spoke about um, the attack on young girls at different times at this January, young girls being killed. And you, the key point you mentioned, undeserved communities across Jamaica, development of girls in undeserved communities across Jamaica. Can you break down what do you mean by undeserved communities across Jamaica? <laughs> Yes, so when we say underserved communities, we're talking about communities that do not have access, access to yeah. fields, access yeah. to coaching, um, you know, what I would consider to be, you know, financial, you know, you know, extra financial dollars that they can just throw and say, you know, hey, you know, my daughter is, is 15 years old, um, she wants to play football, but I don't have extra dollars. I don't have that liquid asset that I can say I can put towards sending her to play football because I've got to feed her. I've got to make sure she gets to school. I've got to take care of the family. I've got to pay rent. Yeah. So, you know, without, you know, that kind of support, um, then it's difficult for those young girls to get the kind of access that they need mm -hmm. and exposure that they need to something as simple as football. It requires a ball and an open space. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, that's ideal in any environment that you're in, but we want to be able to ensure if they need shoes, if they need soccer shoes, we can provide that. If they need transportation, we want to be able to provide that. If they need a team or coaching, um, we want to be able to provide that kind of access, that those kinds of resources in those kinds of communities where they would they never, ever get an opportunity to, you know, be exposed to that. Mm. Now, okay, now I want to go back now before we go on to the bit whereby we can do the practical support of yourself and the, the dollar dollar mentality and everything like that to get that fundamental support. Before the concept of the Reddit Girls came about and the, the build up to this, where were these girls? Where did you find them from? Because I noticed some of them are all over the world. Am I right? <laughs> 
Yes, um, the, the, the pool of the senior women's team right now um, pretty much has a very diverse makeup. We have girls um, that have four passports, if you will, right? So they have, the, the way the, the rules work is if the player's parents or grandparents is from that country and they can basically um, prove citizenship, then they can basically play for that country. So for example, my daughter, she, I'm Jamaican, my husband's Nigerian, and she's born in the US. We call her and my son Niger Americans. Um, they could play for the US, Jamaica, or Nigeria. So, so we have young girls that are born in Jamaica, and we have girls that are born outside of Jamaica. And basically, and again, this is another reason why the foundation is critical to this. Um, when you think about it, you ask, where were these girls before? Yeah. They were with their clubs in the U.S. Um, or with their schools in the U.S. and they were getting formal training or outside the U.S. England, and we have girls in England. We've got girls in Israel right now playing. Yeah. So they were all over the globe getting formal training and support. The girls in Jamaica, again, it's a little bit more difficult, right? Because if they're not identified in the various parishes, or even if they are identified, if the families aren't able to support financially, then they miss out on that opportunity. And I just don't feel that that's a good enough reason for a young girl to miss out on the opportunity to achieve a goal that will change them for the rest of their life from an economic development standpoint. Yes. Yeah. Um, I don't think that that's a good enough reason to not intervene and provide support. Mm. So yes, the team has girls from all over the globe, including Jamaica, but I would submit to you that there are probably girls out there that we have missed based on the timing yes. um, of the qualification. I'll submit to you there are girls out there that we're not even aware about. I've gotten DMs from, from young girls saying, how do I try out for the team? Yes. You know, And they're asking questions and we're trying to respond to those. So we have now created through the foundation access, access and awareness around, you know, what, what, what these girls can do to be a part of the pool um, yes. and how they can basically be supported if they would like to be a part of that pool. And that's the reason why you talk about support the next generation of young female soccer players. So you're, looking, you're looking long-term, long-term. I'm looking yeah. long-term. The, the World Cup is an impetus that yeah. created more awareness and more excitement. But what we don't want to do is the World Cup is now over and everybody go under them, under them roof and put them head down. So what we want to make sure is we don't forget that after that World Cup, this team has the Pan American Games and the Olympic qualifiers. We've got some young reggae girls, the U-17s and the U-20s that have to go on to basically other tournaments. And the key there is it has to be a pipeline. Yes. Right now, I would say the majority of the girls are from outside of Jamaica. Yes. And I would submit to you that the reason for that is because the, the playing field is not leveled. Right. My daughter had a great advantage, right, as it relates to being in the U.S. She can go across the street to the park and kick the ball with some boys, with some girls. She had the recreational teams that she was able to participate with. She was able to go into a club system. It's a pay to play, but I, we could afford to do it. Um, she got the visibility through her clubs to get called into U.S. national team camps and great visibility. She got a scholarship to one of the hidden IVs, the University of Southern California. Yeah. All of this based on what I would consider and say, and take this with a grain of salt, folks that are listening in, what I would say is a little bit of privilege. Right. And I, I'm all about sharing that privilege. Right. We want the best girls in our pools. We want more girls in our pools to where we can develop our own pipeline um, across Jamaica. And then we can bring in folks from outside of Jamaica. And together, that pool will truly will allow us to be sustainable and be able to really make it to the next World Cup and the next World Cup because we've got lots of girls in our pipeline. The more, the merrier. Well, that, that, that's, that's great. That's fantastic. And what is the level of support which is coming from Jamaica? From uh, uh, as Jamaica take on this on board and see these girls as ambassadors? 
Well, I, I will tell you the Jamaican Football Federation has been a major force as it relates to women's football. So the women's team and the men's football teams all fall under the federation, right? Yeah. And so um, they've been basically soliciting sponsorships to help support these girls in their preparation. And they have done a great job. Again, as I shared, the girls have had four camps since qualifying. They had one in Jamaica in January, and then they went back to Jamaica in the February, March, early March timeframe. They had two games against Chile and they, they actually w won both of those games. So then they went in April to South Africa yes. um, and they went and they tied South Africa. And now they're in a camp in Jamaica and they're about to play Panama on the 19th. So that is definitely new territory to be able to have four preparation camps before the World Cup. Um, they're also going to Scotland and they're going to be playing Scotland on May 28th. Um, so we're talking about international games, um, the first of their kind that they're able to play before yeah. they go into the World Cup. So I feel comfortable, um, and I hope the coaches are feeling comfortable that with the support of the Federation, the sponsors are Global Ambassador Sadella Marley, the Bob Marley Foundation, and the Alacran Foundation, that we are basically standing behind the girls. They have more support than they've ever had, but it's not enough. Right. We've got to create more excitement, more support, and we're asking every member of the diaspora to go to our website, www.reggaegirlswithazfoundation.com, yes. and to basically support and donate. Okay. We're, we're going to make sure that um, at the end of this that we post these links online so persons can go to that. Uh, you mentioned about matches friendly. Panama the 19th of May, is that what you said? That's correct. 19th of May, they'll be playing Panama. It will be streaming live on the JFF Live yes. um, TV. So definitely check that out. And in Scotland, May the 28th. That's correct. And I understand that there are persons in the UK here trying to organize coach trip and some packages to go down there and to support you guys. Uh, and what you said four, which is the next one before, which, which is the next one you said there's four matches before the World Cup. Am I correct? No, no, they've four. already done four camps, right? So they did the camp in Jamaica in January. Yes. Then they did one at the end of February, early March. They had two games against Chile in that camp. Okay. Um, okay. And then they basically went to South Africa in April, and now they are in Jamaica for the fourth camp, and they're playing Panama. Okay. And then they will come to Miami. Um, we're planning the foundation um, under the patronage of the Consul General Oliver Mayer and the Vice Mayor Alexandra Davis and the City of Miramar. They're partnering with us yes. to host a four-day celebration and fundraising activities for the girls. Lots of information about that on our website. Um, so they'll be here for four days. They'll have a game on May 23rd. They'll play one of the local WPSL League teams. Yes. FC Surge, and then they will fly out on the 24th to England. They'll be having some activities there with Jamaica National, and then they will go into Scotland and do a small camp there, and they'll play Scotland on the 28th of May. A busy schedule, but we welcome that. Okay. Did I lose you? Did I lose you, Stillborn? Yeah, we saw that I lose that little gap there, but that's okay. We're back now. We're back on the track, yes. I, can you hear me clearly? Yes, yes, I can hear you. Okay, so let's let's get straight into the the four points and the ways how the diaspora can directly support you. I saw these four point strategies to achieve success. And you talk about the platform to connect with the Jamaica diaspora fans, partner with sponsors, donors, clubs, fans, partner with sponsors, donors, grassroots programs, provide monetary and non -monetary, monetary support. So so let's zero in because this is why we are here. How can the diaspora then supports you, practically? Well, realistically, the first support, and this is near term, um, the reggae girls are going to the World Cup. So there's two ways you can support there. You can basically support by, um, you know, going to the World Cup if you are so led and, and, and have the time and the monetary, financial, you know, um, wherewithal to be able to make that trip. Um, yeah. We'd love to have you there. 
If you're not able to um, fly to France and at least take see one of those three games in the group stages, then definitely make sure that you support them online. We will be posting on our website how you can basically watch the games and get to know the reggae girls. Um, and then definitely financial support is always needed. So again, on our website, we have a donate link to where anyone can go to that link and donate directly from that link. Um, and again, we're asking from if it's even a dollar, right? If, if, if the kids have, you know, some coins laying around, cash that in, donate it. We will accept any support whatsoever to support these reggae girls because every little bit make a difference. Yes. And so um, that support is the immediate need. Now, as we said, as I said before, um, this is not a one-stop shop, right? Yes. This is going to be a sustainable foundation and a sustainable fundraising effort to make sure every year the tournaments that they go to, the, um, the, the academy that we're trying to build, that's our second initiative. We're hoping to build a residency program and an academy in Jamaica. And so what that looks like is, and there are several in the U.S., but we're looking and hoping to get the best girls from all the parishes, house them under one entity, right, in Jamaica. We want to be able to educate them academically, from an athletic standpoint, emotional standpoint. We want to basically help them and groom them under this academy to ensure that they can feed into what we're hoping to also support with our third strategy, which is a sustainable women's premier league in Jamaica. So when those girls graduate from high school, they might decide they want to go to college. We can help support them in understanding the college application process. So that's a part of our education. If they don't decide to go to college and they want to go into the pro realm, then we want to make sure that we are supporting a women's premier league in Jamaica. Yes, There's yes. a men's premier league currently, and we want to mirror that for the women so that they have the opportunity to go to college in Jamaica and play football in Jamaica as well. All of these initiatives, right, the academy and the sustainable women's premier league will be feeder pools into our national pool. So again, it starts at the grassroots level and JFF has a great robust grassroots efforts underway. So from that grassroots efforts, it moves into the residency programs, then it moves into the Women's Premier League, and then it tops off at the national team levels. So again, that pipeline, and it has to be sustainable. It can't be today we're here, tomorrow we're gone, yes. right? It's not a sprint, it's a marathon. And I can tell you the foundation's here to stay and we're gonna be supporting them along with Sadella Marley and the Bob Marley Foundation and the Alacran Foundation as well. And I, and I noticed you, you got your, your, the lineup of your board members here, which is, uh, which is yourself and there is Lisa Quarry. Is she related to Donald Quarry? Yes, she is actually. She is a cousin um, of Donald Quarry. Yeah. Her daughter actually also plays on, uh, and she's in the U in the national pool for the Jamaica team. Oh, she's in the team, Lisa Quarry. Yes, uh, she's she's in that pool with my daughter, Jaden. Jaden Matthews is her daughter's name, and my daughter's name is Olufola Shade Adamalakin, and that's uh, a mouthful. Nathan Johnson, uh, financial executive, and also yeah. Georgina Mickelson. I, I was looking, I was looking at the girls, and they look fierce, man. I mean, they look serious. I and mean, they are. <laughs> there's, there's a picture of them walking out and they look really, you know what I'm saying? Oh, no. Um, our, girls, our girls are fierce. They're fearless. Yeah. They're resilient. They're smart. And guess what? They are rooted to rise. And they're planning to go to France and take on the world, guy. So, so I was correct then. They're going for gold. They're going for the other oh, oh, yes. Why else would, no, no. We're going to gold. We're not going on vacation. We're yeah. going for gold. These girls are planning to go all the way. So, so ladies and gentlemen, it's very important that you support the regular girls, and um, you can support them by every dollar, every every bit make a muckle, every dollar, and every um, every bit make a muckle, every bit make a muckle. And the the website is uh, Reggae Girls with a Z Foundation dot com. Am I right? Reggae that is correct, sir. Reggae Girls. 
The only thing that you need to remember is there's a Z. We'll be posting that up later and email info at reggaegirlsfoundation.com. And it's all easy. On Instagram as well, it is Reggae Girls Foundation. Wow, I like this. Facebook is Reggae Girls Foundation. <laughs> YouTube, Reggae Girls Foundation, you know? I, I presume it's all copyrighted, of course, all those things I've been saying. Yes, all that's copyrighted and trademarked. And Twitter is Reggae underscore girls. That if I'll be posting these out literally as well, I, as well. And uh, I'll encourage you as well to post these as well to persons. So so you said, when they, once they go on to the foundation.com, Everything is all settled and anyone want to support financially, all that information is there. Yes, that everyone can, if you'll see a donate button, you can donate. We're going to have some merchandise on there. We sold out on our merchandise, but we are about to launch um, some new um, paraphernalia. So that's going to go live this week. Um, so we'll have, you know, t-shirts, we'll have arm wave flags. We, one of our sponsors is arm waves. And it actually is a arm wave with a flag that you can basically wave when you're at the World Cup versus holding one in your hands. Okay, so wave, wave it like you just don't care, if anything like that. Yeah, and, yes, and, but, yes, yes. But you're, also, you're, but you're also tapping into organizations. Um, you've got platinum, you've got gold, you've got green. So anyone here from an organization you want to do that. Plus you've got these ambassador programs, charter ambassador, a baller. You know what I mean? One thousand to one ninety nine or so. It's all there written. Yes, sir. Five hundred to ninety nine. And what you get with that is that you get a RGF T shirt, decal scarf, um, ten percent one time discount and more. And you got the roots, the one low, and and the guan. Give what you can. That's a wicked one. <laughs> That sounds like some food, isn't it? That sounds like you guys need to set up a restaurant and call all of these. Yeah. Like, some, I think that's a great idea. Shh, shh, let nobody hear this. Let shh, let nobody hear this. This is just you and I deal, yeah. Let nobody. <laughs> no, no, that's 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 very awesome, really. You know what I mean? And uh, will you guys will you be here in Scotland? No, we will not be there in in Scotland. But our brand ambassadors will be there. We have two brand ambassadors for the UK. Um, we have, um, um, as a matter of fact, Saffron. You're familiar yeah. with Saffron. She's one of yeah. our ambassadors. Yeah. And we also have Crystal Davis. Um, she's also one of our brand ambassadors. And they will be present in Scotland representing the foundation. Yes. But I'm looking at some comments here. And um, um, Saffron is here. Hey, Saffron. So proud of the regular girls and their historic achievement. And, and I know there's a secret that Saffron says I should not say anything. You may know as well which is going to happen at the Reggae Girls. So, ladies and gentlemen, there's a big, there's a big exciting surprise that Saffron will be doing. Um, Tasha Baxter said, my fellow team member, aren't we just proud? Tasha Baxter said, I'm extremely proud of the girls. While I was at York Castle High School, whoop, whoop, I went to York Castle High School, so that's my former classmate, um, former schoolmate. I started their first female football team and further got chosen to be part of Jamaica's first organized team. We didn't get up awesome. to the goal thus far, but look, 20 years later, wow. So therefore, it seems like you've been, the whole, the whole concept has been coming from afar and it's just been building. And it's, it's interesting though, uh, Michelle, because <coughs> I just heard about the reggae girls when they got qualified. That's the only time I heard about reggae girls. Everybody knows the reggae boys, but you know that they've been going on for years before, isn't it? Yes, and that's what's interesting, and it's amazing to hear from members of the diaspora that didn't even realize that there was um, a reggae girls team way before. They've been around for 20 plus years. Wow. There have been people behind the scenes who have been trying to create right what we have today, and I, I would tell you that, again, we're pleased and blessed that they stood the course and they did what they did because I, I think that made a difference and that made a difference to where we are today. So I'll tell you, that's the purpose of the foundation. We've got to get the word out. We've got to make sure everyone knows that these young ladies are basically making a difference. They're role models. They are make, they're changing the landscape of women's football. Mm. We're going to make this movement of leveling that playing field a reality. Um, and so, you know, it's definitely important that, that young girls see role models like these reggae girls so that they can say, you know what? 
I want to be like them, right? And that's all you need is to see those kinds of role models and be able to kind of start dreaming about it, really start believing that you can do it. And then guess what? With the support of the foundation, we can make sure that they achieve that. Yes. And I, I like that because that's very inspiring. And I believe that in all things, uh, you know, I, I people always hear me say this, and it is the, the present governor general always say this. And I, it's one of the one of the it's one of those quotes that I hold to myself dearly. He says, um, "What is wrong with Jamaica can always be made be right, can always be made right with what is right for Jamaica. Whatever is wrong with Jamaica can be made right with what is right for Jamaica." And I believe just reading this bit here in your one of your quotes there, we recognize the grit and determination to win is inherent in every great athlete. And the willingness to give is the soul of every Jamaican and shows the pride we feel when our players do well. Now I'm gonna change something there by saying, we recognize the grit and determination to win is inherent in every Jamaican. Yeah. And the willingness to give is the soul of every Jamaican and shows the pride we feel when our people do well. I'm just paraphrasing that because I'm just taking the inspirational element of it. To that end, we have created a number of levels. Okay, so so it is very good, and I believe it is very awesome. And I believe with what is happening, um, you know, and I keep going back to the young girls being missing and all those sort of things. This is something I believe which will be great. And my vision and my sort of thinking was that that place or that house or that setting which you're going to house these girls from the 12 parts of Jamaica, the 14 parishes of Jamaica, somehow could have an offshoot based on the Reggae Girls Foundation that housed deprived young ladies as well. Thank you. That's a good idea. Yeah. Separate and apart from the girls, but something else that reaches out to women, young girls, because we know with the whole issue of domestic violence, the whole issue of, um, you know, pedophilia, rape, and all those sort of things, ladies always want to find that level of refuge. All right. And, well, people generally, but let's do the ladies. And with the Reggae Girls Foundation, with these ladies as the role models who are ballers, kicking the ball, you know what I mean, and going for gold, then they can also be that uh, role model for these person so so that's my vision through this <laughs> and, and just know that that's a big part of our um our work and our education um that ambassador program that we talked about yes. we want those reggae girls and typically when they go into camp they are constantly going out and doing a lot of community service work or they're going out and speaking to young girls and just basically making sure that they understand yes. that, that they're not they're no different than them Right, they've all had challenges. Yes. They've all had to, you know, basically overcome adversity. Um, yes. But it's important that you have a dream and you believe in that dream. Mm -hmm. And I think this reality of making the World Cup and making history proves that it wasn't the financial backing that did it. It was the grit and determination mm -hmm. of these young ladies to say, guess what? I'm going to stay and I'm gonna keep doing what I'm doing and I'm gonna make a difference and they did it, right? Yes. And so imagine if we got the support behind them, right? We could do even more. Yes. So I don't want this World Cup qualification to be the first and only. Yes. I want us to be a force to reckon with every four years. Yes, yes. That's, that's powerful and that's awesome. And um, yeah, so, so therefore, before we go, because I want to make it very short and concise so people can get it, you know, um, what is there any last word that you want to share? Any, any major thing that we may have missed out that you want to make sure gets across to the, the people that are listening and the, the viewers? I would definitely say go to our website. Please register to be a member because we will be sending out newsletters. That's a great way for you to interact with us and tell us what you want to see more of. You have great ideas out there as a, members of the diaspora of things that we could basically begin to do, start doing, stop doing, continue doing. We want to hear from you. So go on there, sign up to be a member so we can stay in touch with you. 
donate for sure, purchase the merchandise, wear it, come out, support them in Scotland, support them in Florida, support them in France, or support them in your house on the TV. Make sure when you're on and you're watching the streams, make sure you're typing, go Jamaica, go Jamaica, right? All of those supports make a difference. We wanna know that you're out there. We wanna know that you're supporting the girls. And so that's really the call to action that I would make, make sure that everyone hears. Fantastic. So ladies and gentlemen, um, you heard the call to action. The call to action is make sure that you go on to the website. We will be posting the website up as well. And you got make sure you also follow them on Instagram, follow them on Twitter. Um, and I'll just, I'll just say it here again, reggaegirlsfoundation.com, which is Reggae Girls with a Z. Uh, the email is info at Reggae Girls Foundation. There's also a telephone number, which is 512-6321-838. We were posting all of these things there. But right now, let's shout out to the Instagram, Reggae Girls Foundation, and you'll see, and you see how fierce the, the ladies look, because I was looking at them, as I said before, they are fierce, man. Man, if I- if Are you afraid? Are you afraid? <laughs> well, I, I never play football. I always, I don't play football. I'm a, I'm a rapper, you know, I break dance. <laughs> yeah, most of, these girls, most of these girls grew up training and playing with boys, so they, they're not afraid of no man. They're not afraid of nobody. Yeah, as I said, me not afraid of nobody, nobody, nobody. <laughs> <laughs> so listen, uh, you know, Michelle, listen, I want to thank you so much for coming on at such short notice, and um, and thanks thank you, to, and, and credit to Saffron Jackson. Saffron, you're there for for reaching out because Saffron knows that. Um, thank you, Saffron. Yeah, Saffron knows that I'm the type of person that just make things happen. I don't wait around for discussions. I just I just move. I just get it done. And that's what the foundation board does. We're about making things happen. Yes. It's one thing to have a vision, but you got to execute on that vision. Yes. And a vision without resources is a hallucination, and we don't hallucinate. Yes, yes. Go straight for the juggler. So, ladies and gentlemen, um, that's my guest, Michelle Adomalekan, the founder, president, executive director of the Reggae Girls Foundation, and um, wanting to create the fundraising as much as possible, support the team, and of course, make sure you, if you can, and you go to Scotland, I believe Saffron and some guys are sorting out a coach load, trailer load, trailer load. Uh, trailer load, bus load. Bus load, you know. Bram, bram, you know what I mean? You know, you know, bram, bram. You know one time, um, there were some guys going to Gatwick Airport and we had a, there was a bus and we were running joke and we were hitting our hands on the bus and said, Ochi, Ochi, Ochi. <laughs> Next stop driver, next stop. <laughs> next stop driver, next stop driver. So listen, I want to thank you. I want to thank you so much. And my regards to the ladies as well. And of course, this video will be shared over and over. And I'll also download it and just upload it very quickly on YouTube as well. So it can be shared because the wealth of information which is in this and how people can reach you and support the ladies as well is awesome. And I'm very grateful to be a part of the journey, um, Michelle. I, I can't I can't leave without bigging up my VP, um, Lisa Quarry, because she's hard at work behind the scenes working on our Miramar event. Yes. So big up to Lisa Quarry. She's doing great things. We're excited about our send off. And so again, can't can't tell you enough what a great resource she's been for the foundation. So thank you. Awesome. And and that and that is that is really great. So Michelle, all the best. All the best, sir. Bye-bye, everyone. See you around. Bye -bye. Okay. Bye-bye. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, um, thank you so much for, for coming on just now and um, with, with Lisa, um, sorry, with um, Michelle. And as of course, I'm not going to take this much longer because I want to make sure that it is not so long so people can watch it. Sometimes people, when they see something like one hour, they don't really watch it all well. So I'm going to wrap up now quickly and just thank you so much for joining. Make sure you share this video and um, make sure you like and subscribe to their different platforms, the YouTube Reggae Girl. We're gonna post all those information right now so you can actually pick that up. Um, but the most important thing is that we support them as well. They got a massive and great support and ladies are fantastic and great and wonderful. And as I said, I believe it will also be something like a catalyst that will also support other ways to support young girls in Jamaica and worldwide and may they be an inspiration 
to you and to Jamaica and thank you again and Saffron thank you so much for making this link and of course we'll tell you at some point the surprise that Saffron will have um, when it comes on to the reggae girls now before I go I just want to ask you to subscribe to my show the Silver and Show um, YouTube um, um, Facebook uh, WhatsApp uh, not WhatsApp but uh, Instagram as well Silver and TV Silver and TV Silver and TV and every Thursday what I want to do is to have this night to be dedicated to Caribbean, especially Jamaica as well. I'm a yard, you know what I mean? So, of course, I have a level of bias, I must say. I'm straight out of Ochi, so therefore, I'll support anything for Jamaica as well. Um, so next week, I'm not sure what's going to happen yet, but I'm hoping to maybe talk about the Diaspora Initiative as well, which is a conference in Jamaica. Um, this weekend, you have the Minister of Foreign Affairs, who is here. Um, She's going to be at the High Commission at 3 o'clock. If you want to go there, I believe there's a invite there. But I think it is free to go to the High Commission and listen to the talk about that. So there's much more things happening. And of course, I'm back onto my regular thing with Brexit, Trump coming over here, the Prime Minister giving her final day where she's going to step down. Boris Johnson is in the frame. Ladies and gentlemen, I kid you not, by the end of this year, you could have a next Prime Minister and it could be Prime Minister Boris Johnson and you could have an election where you could have a Prime Minister Corbyn or you could have a Brexit whereby we finally leave the European Union and, um, and next week May the 23rd what you know is going to happen is the European election strange that we have a European election and we may have a Brexit so it's all crazy which is happening but guess what it is all good I believe it is completely good I believe that no matter what as long as you believe in what you're doing anything that happens whether it's Brexit or no Brexit but what I find very disappointing and this is just me that the members of the government have not actually respect the result of the referendum which says that we need to leave the EU you got members of Parliament different parties fighting to remain which is complete disrespect I believe of course it's my personal view I've got to give my grant um, that they don't want to be in the that they want to remain in the European Union when the majority of the people spoke anyway on that day thank you very much and have a fantastic year thank you bye bye thank you for all the guys who came on um, I can't uh, you well you know you are I see all the different names there peace out see you later bye bye Thank you.